Hello everyone, welcome to a practice session of GATB which is a MSc level biotechnology entrance examination. This is a practice session one and the topic name is biotechnics. So GATB examination is closing in and you are right now confused because there is a lot to cover but you have very little time. For example, if we take the biotechnics part, there are a lot of topics like this. This would really make your brain mad. But let me help you with that. We run some analytics, identify potential hotspots, and then if we filter that particular syllabus, we can identify these are the hotspots based on the previous year questions. So obviously we can pre prioritize our preparation. So in this video, we'll talk about that, we'll solve questions, and I'll tell you about resources. Especially during this pandemic time, it's impossible for you to go to an offline classroom, right? So you have to think about your alternative while you are locked in your home. You can study from your home online using an academy, right? It would help in your preparation. So there are daily practice sessions in an academy. Specifically, there are achievers batch which are dedicated for practice in many subjects like physics, biotech, maths, or chemistry, you can try this app anytime. Now, you just have to download the app. You can use my code AP10 to get a 10% discount, and you can start learning from the educators. Throughout this process, an academy would guide you. Now, let's come to the question number one. All of the following techniques could be used to understand protein-protein interaction, except immunoprecipitation, FRET, GST pull down followed by Western blot and FACS facts. So we need to understand what are the techniques that are important for protein protein interaction and what cannot be used to study so. And if you have guessed it correctly, the correct answer here would be fluorescence associated cell sorting. So that is a technique which is used to sort out one cell type from a heterogeneous mixture. It cannot detect protein-protein interaction, right? If you want to learn more about facts, how facts work or fluorescence-based cell sorting work, the link is in the i button. Click it now. Second question is, DASH is the best method for studying protein secondary structure, while in order to study protein tertiary or even higher order structure, we can use DASH technique. So you have to understand what is one and what is two. One could be IR spectroscopy and NMR spectroscopy. Then UVV spectroscopy and IR spectroscopy, circular dichroism spectroscopy and extra crystallography, circular dichroism spectroscopy and UV base spectroscopy. If you guessed it correctly, the correct option would be option C. Circular dichroism spectroscopy is good for secondary structure, whereas extra crystallography can tell us about higher order structures in a better fashion. So these kind of question has been asked in GATB. You can take a look at yourself. In JNU CEB 2018, which was the previous form of GATB, they have asked similar questions. Secondary structure content of protein cannot be determined. So the question is very, very uh, methodological and stereotypic. So one type of format they ask this and that technique cannot be used to determine something, and which of the technique can be used to determine something. So this is a general format. So you can clearly guess that FRET cannot be used to determine protein secondary structure. So these important terms are really crucial for you because they prefer these terms if you want to learn uh, more about the previous year question you can get that video link in the i button okay question number three you want to purify histone from a cell extract but unfortunately you don't have an antibody against histone so which method could be used to purify histone affinity chromatography ion exchange chromatography gel filtration chromatography hydrophobic interaction chromatography now when you don't have a, I mean, antibody against a particular protein, you cannot do affinity purification. So what else you can use? If you know the size, if you know the charge, or if you know the hydrophobicity, which technique you possibly can use? Does histone tell you about charge? So let me know in the comment which techniques can be used in this case. Okay. Secreted IgM antibody was first loaded on a SDS page in a reducing condition and later loaded on a separate experiment in a native page. How many bands would be observed? 
So IgM is a pentamidic structure, right? If you load it in a SDS page, you would get two bands, one corresponding to the heavy chain, all these heavy chains, and one corresponding to the light chains, right? So this is that and what would you get in case of uh, a particular native page you would get a one particular band right yes resolving power of a microscope is a function of dash wavelength of light used numerical aperture of the lens system refractive index wavelength of the light used and numerical aperture of the lens system so Resolving power of the microscope is function of both wavelength and the numerical aperture, right? We remember the equation of uh, uh, limit of resolution, right? That tells us it is proportional to uh, lambda and it is also inversely proportional to the numerical aperture, right? So last option would be the correct one. Similar question has been asked in JNU CB 2018. They said resolving power of a microscope can be increased by such and such. Question number six says, which of the following microscopy principle is very similar to a pinhole camera? So they just wanted to know how you, how well you understand the concept. So it would be confocal microscopy. The heart of the confocal microscopy is usage of a pinhole, which can enhance the resolution several, several times. So confocal microscopy is basically using a pinhole camera-like principle. If you want to learn more about confocal microscopy, the video would be there in the i button and the last question of the day which of the following cannot be achieved using real time quantitative pcr so what you need to understand the qpcr limitations so given in the situation of covid and covid detection is done by qpcr this is a very important topic in this particular uh, year so you need to learn more about qpcr you can go to the i button how creb is interacting with dna so the options are, I mean, the question reads like, which of the following cannot be achieved using real-time PCR? How Krebs is, how Kreb, which is a transcription factor, is interacting with the DNA? Gene expression difference in CMIC, gene expression difference in CMIC in a healthy versus cancer patient. Determination, determining the number of mRNA in a given sample from human brain. Combining with chip, it can tell us whether a protein of interest is binding to a gene X or not. Right? So the last one is a principle of chip qPCR. Yes, there you can understand uh, which gene a protein can possibly bind. You can pull down the protein and look for that particular gene of interest using qPCR. Then you can determine the amount of mRNA by absolute quantification from qPCR. You can also do relative quantification from qPCR data to understand whether a gene has gone up or down regulated in a particular condition like cancer. But what you cannot do, you cannot study DNA protein interaction only with qPCR, right? So obviously option A here would be the correct option. Similar type of questions has been asked in JNUCB 2018 where they have asked which of the following technique is used to quantify mRNA. And this is pretty straightforward, but this is to show you that they are focused on these following techniques. Now, if you want any of these PCR techniques like qPCR, Western blotting, gradient PCR, nested PCR, I have all of that in my channel. So you can click on the link in the i button to look at it. I hope this session was useful. Anyway, if you want more flashcards regarding all of these biology techniques that would help you to revise quicker you can join an academy and you can also follow me in instagram or facebook you can like share and subscribe this video if you like this video give it a big thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe and do let me know in the comment how you like my videos thank you